we're going to switch gears and go back to our community schools bill. Um, we have a new draft, I believe. Is that right? We do. I can I can share it if you want. Yeah. yeah. Do I have um, Jesse? Yes. Do I have? Yeah. Yep. You should be all set, Jim. Okay. Thanks. Okay, can people see this? Mm -hmm. Yep, great, okay. So for the record, Jim Damore, let's console. We're walking through draft 6.1 of your amendment to H6 on community schools. Um, so we had a change here to every child. It's a, every neighborhood before. Um, and then um, we have a citation here to this uh, point about return on uh, investment. So that's been added. We have a citation to this other um, citation about, um, about the yield on having um, this program. And then we have to still add- That's not, that's not the capital Y yield. That's the word yield. No, as in not, our, not. I just want to make sure people know that that's not related to the to our ed finance word yield. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, eight, we need to add a finding on urban, suburban, and rural schools still. Um, we changed the name of the grant program uh, from a pilot to a demonstration grant. And that's throughout the bill. I haven't highlighted it everywhere, but it's been changed throughout the bill. Um, and then there's hey, a comment. Excuse me for just one second, Jim. If you wouldn't mind um, zooming back out a, just a little bit. Uh, I think it's um, too big for people on YouTube to see. Oh, okay. Um, just a little. <laughs> oh, hold on, that's the problem, okay. How's that? That's perfect. Yep. Okay, so we were here. So the community, community school coordinator means a person who, and these are changes that were suggested. Um, so still a full-time or part-time staff member um, serving in an eligible school, uh, et cetera, and appointed in accordance with Vermont law. And then over here is responsible for the identification, implementation, and coordination of the program uh, subject to the operational and reporting structure of the community school coordinator's employer. Um, and then, um, the grant, grant um, authorization, uh, the grant is two things, to hire a community school coordinator uh, or to argument uh, work already being performed uh, to develop and implement a community school program. And then we have a point about proration here. So if you're going to get rid of proration, then the secretary should award grants on, uh, based on relative need, in which case you might want to establish criteria uh, to guide the secretary in making that determination. And then use of grant funding, again, now has two purposes, to hire and to augment work already being done. Um, and if the work is to hire a community school coordinator, then to answer every four about what they do in the first year versus the second two years. Um, and then um, this was changed based on uh, email from Catherine uh, and JFO. Uh, so now it's uh, being funded from ESSA, uh, really fund, pursuant to this section uh, of federal law. Um, and I just added some words about technical assistance. And so I just said, 
such as assistance with applying for the grant funding uh, and use of grant funding. Um, and that was it for changes. Okay, thank you. Um, Representative Austin and then Jane. Oh. Um, if you go back to the beginning, I'm wondering, um, you made a statement right at the beginning, I think it was in the first paragraph about that community schools has been shown to increase something. It says, according to most recent data, can we put that, can we cite that data or just put a source of that data? Where are we? Uh, well, the we source is here. So it's in the, sure. it's in the above um, paragraph. Uh, number five? In the first, yeah, number five, the first sentence is that the same? Is that the same source as that statement? Uh, I don't know the source of that one. Okay, because I think we really need to cite the sources that we're using. I mean, that's just my opinion. I just I tend to look at sources, and no, I think know. that's fair. I think I think that's fair, and I think uh, maybe Kathleen, I think you you're able to help us with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other just question I oh, wait, have. Hold on, let me just see. Okay. Kathleen, are you able to respond to those questions brought by Representative? And um, because this started out as model legislation, everything here that we haven't added a specific citation for comes from the um, community schools playbook and all the research material at the Learning Policy Institute. So it's easy to add. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So we Great. can cite that main document. Right. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. And just, I just wonder like on outcomes of this program, how, I mean, are we gonna measure like how many people use it or if student outcomes, attendance and academic achievement, are we gonna measure that somehow? Or how will we see that this program is working and that it might need to be adjusted or tweaked or something because it's not meeting outcomes that we're hoping for? I mean, I would think it would be use that, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if, if we could just keep track, someone could just keep track of how many people use it. You know, I just would like to have some idea. Of did, you, did you wanna, did you wanna add something to the bill? Um, I, well, I don't, I, I can't add it cause I don't know how to measure it. You know, I don't know what the measurement would be, but I, I do think it would be helpful to have some way to look back on it. Maybe in the document that Kathleen was talking about, they could, I'm sure they address outcomes. We don't, or we don't have to figure out how they measure it. We just have to tell them what they want. We want them to measure and why we want it. Okay. okay. You know, I would just, uh, you know, like to measure, well, it's making, you know, it's, you know, talking about student outcomes and attendance, but that would be a lot of work for someone. I, there, there, there's a report uh, back listed on page eight. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Thank you. If I could respond. Yeah. Um, Thank you. We have AOE reporting on the program twice. Okay. Um, after the first year and after the end of the third year of implementation. And um, beyond that, we can't really choose metrics because each each grant applicant will be rolling out a different program based on their, their community needs and their assessments. So each individual program will be deciding what they want to do. And then I'm sure tracking outcomes of their individual program. If, if we wanted to, you know, one of the things we were going to try to talk to the AOE about is how they will develop the grant application. Um, I, you know, I'd be shocked if, a basic every basic grant application says how are you going to measure your progress okay. so um, if there's a way that we need to make sure that aoe includes that language in the grant application i'm totally okay with that that's kind of grant that's kind of grant 101 okay great thank you okay um representative james did you have something in addition i did um Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm also looking at the draft um, and I had a couple of comments and a question. Um, on page three, 
Line 13, we're waiting for a finding on urban, suburban, and rural schools. I have some information and I'm assuming what the committee would like to see here is really more some information that this has been rolled out successfully in rural areas. Am I correct on that? Okay, I have that. Just a finding to just let people know that it didn't just happen in Chicago. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I have all that material. And then um, scrolling down, I did want to discuss quickly um, page six, line 17. Um, one thing that I am worried is getting lost um, in, this, in this new phrasing is our, our belief and what the research shows that having someone in the role of community school co coordinator is vital. And so I, I would like to find a way to retain that language. And when we were talking about this, um, it was sort of my understanding that we would allow the grant flexibility um, for applicants in a way that would either allow them to hire a community schools coordinator, or if they already had someone in that role to augment that work. And to me, the way this is, uh, this is a little different because it implies that you could apply for a grant without having a community school coordinator. So this is augment work already being performed, you mean? So you, you'd like to see language more related to uh, a, a position that's already there? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the, um, in looking over all the, uh, the research that I've looked at, the role of a community school coordinator, having that position and someone who is specifically tasked with that, that title and that work is really important to the effectiveness of the program. So what I, what I anyway would, would not want to see would be um, a school or a district being able to apply um, without having somebody in that role. So in my mind, th there are two ways you can do this. You can apply for the money to hire a community schools coordinator, or if you already have a community schools coordinator or someone that you're going to designate to that, that you could get the, get the money to expand their work. I see Colin is in the room. Did you have a thought on this one, Colin? Yes, um, I changed scenery. Uh, Colin Robinson, Vermont NEA. I, I also uh, thank you, Representative James, for flagging this because I had a similar reflection. And so, um, but also understand sort of the intent. And so perhaps it is as simple as um, saying something like uh, an applicant could designate uh, an individual to be the community schools coordinator um, and then use that to augment the work or some, I would, you know, Jim could probably come up with a better wording than I can on the fly. But the notion being, as Representative James spoke to, that there could be somebody already doing the work um, and making sure that person is designated and then is using the these these funds to supplement and expand existing work. Um, one of the things from the original, the bill is introduced, I think is the, was the notion that districts could apply for this um, to not supplant existing work, right? But to expand upon existing work. And I think that's sort of what we're trying to drive at here, right? Do you think it could be as simple as augment work already being performed by an existing community school school coordinator to develop and implement? Um, designated? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, what we all, what we heard from others is that there might be schools that are already doing this work and, and we know we're doing this work in various ways and there not, might not be a person whose full-time job it is to do this who perhaps, might be in, in a position to move into that. Perhaps um, you could, you could um, sort of noodle that language and see what it is and offer it back to the committee. Happy to. Can I keep going? I had a few more. <laughs> yeah, let me just, I'm just checking to see, um, make sure you're not the only one here. And I'm gonna look at my screen. Okay, yes, go ahead. Okay, so um, page seven, line five. 
Um, I, it was my understanding that we were going to strike out the concept of proration completely. We did talk about that, didn't we? Yeah. But the point, point I'm raising here is that's that's what I'm, I'm um, that's what that bracket's for. Saying if you yeah. strike it out, then what comes what replaces it? Because now the secretary probably needs some criteria upon which to base uh, his decisions around relative need. So I'm not sure what to put in there if you, if you take out proration. How okay. about, um, could it be the amount appropriated, blah, 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 is not sufficient to fully fund? Kathleen, I want, I'm going to stop you for just a minute because okay. I want to flag that one right now. So that's page seven, line, line five. Because I want to be able to look at people's faces. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll stop sharing here. I, I, think but I want to make sure that there's something else that you wanted to, if you wanted to, to address something else while yep. the bill is up. I do. Um, I'm looking at my own copy, actually. Um, so bottom of page um, nine, I guess, or yeah, bottom of page seven, I guess, just still gets. State what it is, because people might not be looking at it to the question I had about um, designating, making sure that there's a designated community schools coordinator. So again, it's that same language. It says to augment work already being performed by the eligible applicant. So that's really what we were talking about earlier. Just my, my belief based on the research I've read that there needs to be a designated person. Yeah. And okay. then um, my only, Final question um, is, again, getting to that feeling of really wanting to make sure that the grant application um, guidelines are what we want and that the technical assistance provided from the AOE is what we want and how we ensure that that happens. Okay. Um, Colin, is that, is that you? a new hand or an old hand? <laughs> It's an old hand, I apologize. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking to the committee. I think one of the things is we had talked about proration, wanna just proration or it's just a grant. Um, and Jim Demaray, you wanna help us a little oh, bit? I, I think that you just need to have the agency come in and ask and have a conversation about if it's not gonna be prorated, what guidance do you need to determine need? and have that conversation. Okay. Anybody else on that one? Um, I don't know when we can get them in. Um, perhaps uh, Kathleen, you could reach out to um, Heather Boucher sure. or, 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 or Ted. Um, and ask them if they, they want to speak to us, if they could speak to us on that. Actually, unfortunately, I think Deputy Secretary Boucher said she's busy, but. Um, yeah, okay, so um, Jesse, will you reach out to the secretary, assistant secretary, to, to, the, to the group and say that we, we would like their um, input on uh, the wording on page, what section is it? So is it section, was page five? No. Um, yeah, on, on page seven, it's in section, it's the grant administration. And we'd like their, their input on that section. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Just to clarify, are you looking for oral testimony from Deputy Secretary Boucher or uh, written testimony this week or? Um, if we can get it this week, that's great. There are some other things that we're dealing with, so it may have to go to the beginning of next week. Kate, for such a, um, a small piece, don't you think uh, just some a written yeah. suggestion from them is sufficient? Yeah. Okay. I'm Thank happy to write to her and explain what we're looking for. 
Yeah, a copy, Jesse. Great. Okay. Representative Austin. I think um, Ted is coming in tomorrow uh, morning. I wonder if we pose the question today, if he could perhaps bring us the answer tomorrow. Great. Good, good idea. Um, Jesse, would you mind sending that as well? Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll include, uh, I'll send an email right now, CCing yeah. Representative James, um, requesting either a written testimony or um, comment from Ted tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, since then, there's been a question that's come in from a couple of, of sources. Um, one was the former uh, Secretary of Human Services, um, as well as former Lieutenant Governor, who had concerns that we hadn't included the Agency of Human Services on this in this conversation anywhere. Um, I have reached out to um, Ann Pugh, Representative Ann Pugh, to just take a quick look to see if this is something they want input on or, um, and also just, I will try to be sorting out um, on the break, how we address that. Um, there also is a group, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of the group, Kathleen, Representative James that I spoke with. Vermont Education Equity Project. Who has been very involved in this in this concept and, and want to speak to us? So we're I'm scheduling that for after the break. Um, Representative Williams. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Webb. Um, I just want to uh, express uh, Doug Racine's uh, letter from yesterday. Um, I was excited about getting this bill passed. And that has not changed. I think this is, is a, a very good uh, concept. Uh, but I also, uh, because of his letter, it helped me understand better the concerns that Representative Tooth and Representative uh, Kupali uh, addressed yesterday. Uh, I feel that I, I lost sight of the need for this success in benefiting schools of poverty. Therefore, I, I hope we will consider the testimony of Mr. Racine. Yes. I think Thank you raised some valid points. Thank you. Yeah. So we are, we're working on, on that and looking for a solution. Also, at the time he was looking at it, it was related to the education fund, um, which was his concern, which it no longer is, so. Okay, anybody else? I am hoping at, what I, at the next step here for us is going to be to um, follow up with, com with um, corrections committee to see if they want to add to the uh, our school construction bill. Um, if so, if what language we would need to include, and if not, I would be looking to uh, to go to vote on that tomorrow. Um, we have the ability. We're coming back after after the floor and after the the joint hearing. Anyway, we'll have opportunity to talk again. Um, as far as the other bills, I think we're probably not going to be ready to pass to move those before the break, sadly. Um, it just, we have a few things to address. I think we, well, see if I can have this a small group work on the literacy bill. Um, and if we can get a few of those things answered about the community schools bill in relation to the agency of human services. I think that would be helpful. Um, and we'll hear from uh, 92, the e-finance, we'll, we'll hear from um, the, C, the CFO, Agency of Education tomorrow, and then we'll hear follow up from the field when we get back. And our work needs to be done when we get back. There'd be no more, no more, no more decorating. <laughs> um, 
Um, Reverend says, Williams, is that a new hand or an old hand? I'm sorry, that's an old hand. <laughs> I'll get rid of it right now. <laughs> Representative James. Chair Webb, um, could you clarify um, for me and for, and for um, some of the newer folks on the committee, just so people have context for the sense of urgency, crossover. Yes. So, you know, our bills that we that we love <laughs> and that have put so much time in um, where they need to be by when so that they don't so they aren't dead for this year. Well, it would have been a lot better if we could have gotten them out by the end of this week, but that's just not going to be possible. Um, I'm hoping that community schools, we, I mean, that, that construction we can. Um, I, th I thought we might be able to move community schools, but we may not be able to do that. Uh, one thing I keep in mind about community schools is there is another body that looks at these bills. And one of the people that's in the education committee chairs the um, health and human services in the Senate. So it, it won't be forgotten if we don't get it perfect. <laughs> um, I usually don't try to give them the work to do because they'll make up their own mind on what they're doing. Um, but it's just important to know that there, there's a, a, a danger in nothing happening. <laughs> so at some point, it's going to be we're voting with whatever we've got. <laughs> and I, I met also with the dates. So yeah. how oh. it all works with the dates, I think that would be great to refresh. Must be out of our committee. Uh, policy committee must be done by the time we get back but we're sending everything to money committees and those have to be out the following week, which is why I'd kind of hoped for us to be able to get them out this week so that we could give them a little bit longer period of time to look at these. I believe they're gonna have to go to both ways and means and appropriations. Don't we have the 12th till the 12th to get policy bills yeah, that's out? one week. That's one week. Okay. I thought, I thought you said, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting our week off. Yeah. So if there's anything uh, you need for me to try to turbocharge community schools, let, let me know. And yes, there's that. Um, and the others, were, I know that we're gonna wait on literacy and I know that we're gonna wait on 92. Um, anything else? Okay, thank you everybody.